I think this is okay. My <laughs> Sort of feels to me that you can't see because I've got the camera a bit in the way of what I'm looking at. But I think we're okay. I think I think you can see this bit here, can't you? Um, we've just finished yesterday um, a three-day workshop here in the studio in Newport um, using these lovely Indian wooden print blocks. Um, I've just had a new order arrived, um, and I've been. <laughs> you can see if you saw my basket if, they're all nicely used now there's one this poor boy that hasn't got used so we should be playing with him today um but they've been glorious and the students made some absolutely beautiful beautiful work with them we were working on making backgrounds and um feature and then a feature piece to feature in them i obviously haven't got any of the students but i have put um some images up on facebook this was the sample piece i made with that lovely um, this is huge tree, I think I've imaginatively called him, because he is a huge tree, in the middle, which I've started quilting, and I'll go on to finish, and then I'll be machine embroidering into the images here to bring them up. I think I'd like to do um, a set of these. Um, so I'm going to try and stop saying, um, I'm <laughs> I can add it to my sniffs, can't I? Ums and sniffs. So I thought it would be nice. I've been watching them play with these blocks for three days and make gorgeous stuff, and it's been very hard for me to keep my hands off. In the evenings after they've gone, which is usually fairly late, because um, if we're in the groove, we keep going, um, I have had a little play clearing up the paint and such like, but, you know, I've had to stop because I need to clean the studio and feed and that sort of thing. So I thought um, before I actually clean up all these, I'm going to put all these drop cloths into the washing machine to wash. I thought before I do that, I might just have a few little play sessions. And I thought, well, while I'm doing it, I might as well record them so you can see what I'm up to. Um, before I forget, um, just as I'm standing here about to basically demonstrate, I suppose, I'm having an open day here in the studio um, on Saturday, the 1st of July. That's next Saturday, in fact. Um, I think I've said about 10 to 5 p.m., or I might have said 10 to 4 p.m. Um, after 10, that's the main thing, really, and just come along. I'm going to make some lunch. Uh, it'll be just sandwiches and stuff like that, but it means that if you're travelling, you can get something to eat here. Um, I'm praying for nice weather so we can be out in the garden and I can take my demo table out there. If not, we've got plenty of room inside. You can come and have a good nosy at what I've been doing here. You can have a look in the shop. You can see all the things you've been watching develop on um, the videos for the last year, in fact. Um, and I'll have plenty of work out for you to look at and I'll be demonstrating various techniques. Dixter will be here to meet and sign autographs if anybody would like to come and see him. He's a bit distraught. All the girls have gone today, so I'm glad somebody's coming to visit him next week. Um, so if you can come, I know it's short notice. Um, I'll keep posting it up on Facebook and, and on my blog as well. Um, do come along. It would be really lovely to see you. And it's a good chance to come and have a look at what workshops are available. I do keep tweaking the program a bit. Um, I've just added in another lovely leaves in this October um, as we've run out next May. Um, so I've popped one in for this October in a space that I found. Um, so that will be going on. Um, and I'm going to put another one in for next October. And also I'll be putting in a new drawing class. So there'll be new things to look at. The programme will be here. Um, and I really hope we'll see lots of you. So moving on swiftly to the playtime. I've got here lovely Indian wooden print blocks um, to play with. I've got a big pile of different papers. I've got some layout paper. Um, I've got some cartridge paper, which is um, rather nice, and I've got just plain copier paper. And I've also got behind me a few pieces, if we get time, um, of pre-soda soaked fabric. So I've got some cotton lawn and some plain cotton. I usually start warming up with anything on paper because it's cheap, readily available, and takes prints really well, so it's a good place to start to see what they're going to do. I've also got set of colour paints. These are set of colour opaque. I know I keep banging on about this and I'm still surprised when people um, get poor results because they haven't been using the correct paint. Set of colour is, in my opinion, and for the ones that I've used, and I've used all the brands I know of, the most opaque and resilient paint for fabric that is on the market. That's why I sell it. No other reason. I'm not um, a distributor for set of colour. I'm not... Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I just think it's the best paint. That's why I sell it. And this is going to allow me to get really fantastic resist techniques. I'm just noticing on this piece I've made here, in this top corner here, this is one of the paisleys and one of the flower patterns put on. And I don't know if you can see, but they're in blue and green. And I've over dyed in bright red 
um, and it's held the colour absolutely beautifully. If that paint wasn't fully opaque and with any other paint that I know of on the market, whether labelled opaque or not, I would have lost some of that green and blue and over dyeing with red. The green would have gone muddy, slightly muddy, if not completely brown, and the blue would have gone purpley. So, for goodness sake, don't waste your money trying to use something else. Trying to use something cheaper that won't work because it's not kind to your inner artist. What else have I got? So I've got a set of colour, I've got some palettes here to put my paints out on, and I've got my trusty old um, rollers. These, to my mind, are by far and away the easiest way of um, applying the paint to the blocks. They're just fast, they're very efficient, they put in a nice, fine, gentle, but very even coat, and allow us to get good prints. I just notice they're a bit wet after I've washed them up, so I'm just going to squeeze them out on my drop cloth, because what I don't want is a whole lot of water coming out of them. Um, into my paint because it will just dilute it. Um, that's only because they were just washed up last night after the students left. Right, this here you can't see just out of camera, but here this is my cup of tea, so I'll just get one of those. I don't want to boast, but we've got the aircon on here. I've got it on a nice 17 to cool us all down. I love it. On day one of the workshop, you see, I'm seven minutes, I haven't even started. Well, this is going to be a series, then, isn't it? It's going to be a series. Um, so, on Day one, which, which was the last of the really boiling days, Wednesday, it was about 30 degrees outside, and I had the aircon on in here, and after about an hour, and somebody chirped up and said, Hilary, can we, can we turn the aircon off? I'm absolutely freezing. And they were apparently all absolutely frozen. I was just thinking, oh, this is great, it's really cool in here. So we turned it off and turned it up a little bit, um, but it is fantastic to have the air-conditioned premises in this hot weather. So let's get a piece of paper. I've got this table, I've found the easiest way, I, you, you can block print using a piece of foam, but I've found the easiest way for me is to actually pad out the table. So on the table I've got a couple of sheets of calico, um, and I've got a couple of sheets of, well this is actually thermal and wadding, it could be wadding, it could be felt, anything with a bit of softness in it is just going to allow me to get a better print. Um, I found with the foam with the foam, um, come on Hillary, what's the word you're looking for? With the foam block things to put, to stamp onto, um, I just keep losing it and I keep forgetting to use it and I keep going off the edge, so I find this easier. So I'm just going to start with a piece of paper, I'm going to pick a stamp. Um, what I might do, because we're never going to get this all into one video, and I want to try all my new stamps. Um, so let's start with some of these curly leaf type paisleys, which I think are really nice designs. These are very classical Indian designs. Um, but I think they work beautifully um, for making materials. So I've got a couple of different, so this is like a double paisley, you'll see when I print it. I've got a right, righty and lefty paisley, so I can use those together. Um, and I've also got, just waving to people coming through the door there, um, I've also got this, which is another curling leaf paisley, which I'm going to use. Um, just hang on, five seconds. I won't be long, about 20 minutes. Okay. All right. It's just, just the other half coming in there. They, oh, hang on, Dixie's off to greet him. Um, and then I've got a couple of these, which I was sort of counting that paisley-ish type. Um, no, I wouldn't, that's a load of rubbish. They're kind of, but they're these curly leaf patterns, curly leaves and flowers. So let's see what we can do with those. Let's pick up, typically for me, a great big fat block like that. I'm gonna mix some color. Um, we'll just move my tea out of danger there. If you can hear trotting around in the background, that's just Dixa. Um, bouncing with excitement because people coming in. Right, I'm going to put out some, I've made a lovely discovery, which is if you mix leaf green and cobalt blue, you get a really pretty teal color. I am going to, so we'll mix those together. I'm going to put my trays behind me, remind me about that because I'll be looking for them. So if I mix those together, it makes a really nice teal blue-green. It's very vivid. A lot of the colours straight out of pots are very vivid. And if you want to just dull that down a bit so it's not quite so um, almost primary, I find it. And I mean primary in the sense of childlike, perhaps. Shake that. I'm just going to add a little bit of grey which will just, whoops, not a little bit of grey then, okay, I'm going to add a shed load of grey, and that will just mute that down into, as you can see, a very nice and beautiful turquoise colour, which I'm just loving. So, I'm going to roll that out on there. I'm going to roll it onto my block. 
light hand. I don't want too much paint on here, but I want enough for a print and I want it even. And I'm just going to push down on the block and voila, we have a beautiful print. So let's just see what happens if we, let's try and do this in a, a regular sort of repeat. I'm not very good at this because it requires some sort of discipline, which isn't feeding into my strengths, but we'll have a go. So I'm doing a sort of line across. I hope you can see, I'm doing a line across and I'm putting smudges on the edge with my fingers. Um, but as we all know, do I care about that? No, I don't. I'm trying to work. <laughs> Even just one stamp going upside down gets me confused. So there we go. A straight off the edge. Always go off the edge of your materials. It makes them look much more exciting. Of course, I've just plonked in there without any thought whatsoever. But never mind. That'll be okay too. It's my piece. I can say that was intended. So a bit more on there. I'm going to get lovely drop cloths off these. The drop cloths are already after only... Let's see, how many days of workshops have we had? One, two, three, we've had six days of workshops and I've already got very beautiful drop cloths. You can see this pattern is building up very nicely here, even with my smudge in the middle. Um, so we'll keep going. Not worrying overly much about perfect prints either. Um, perfection is of very little interest to me, which is just as well, because I'm not terribly good at doing it, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not because I'm gonna get the overall effect anyway. So that's a back, back, back one there. That made absolutely no sense at all, did it? That's a back, 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 back one there. Um, but anyway, I knew what I meant. <laughs> I always know what I mean. I always follow myself. And just fill in at this corner as well um, with, I think it would be that. And then that. Right. So we've got one layer of pattern, and I could certainly stop at that. That's very beautiful. And we were talking on the course that for home furnishings, um, these would make beautiful fabrics done in different colours. I'm really liking the idea. I've got a new house, say a new house, an old shamble of a house, but new to me. Definitely needs, definitely needs some love and care and a lot of furnishings. So these would make beautiful curtains, table covers, bed covers, cushions, throws. Um, you name it. So I may well be using these. I really, um, I like the idea of making my own fabrics there and I've got all the material here to do it. Um, but if I was thinking of using this, and I could certainly use it in artwork as well, it's quite useful sometimes to have some lighter patterned ones, but it's not something I'm very good at doing because I have a tendency to do this, which is change the colour around a bit. So I'm going to add a little blue jean and take a colour just ever so slightly darker. Stay with the same Stay with the same, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Block, we'll stay with the same block. Oops, nearly painted it on the back there. So again, I'm just going over the top of it. And I'm going to, what am I going to do with this one? Let's just offset it to the left of the ones I've done. Okay, so that's one. This, honestly, it's so addictive. You could go on with this for hours. It's quick and easy to do. Um, the results are absolutely beautiful. You're making gorgeous stuff. You're going to get good results. All the students on the course that's just finished got fantastic results. I've got a big splodge there. Am I bothered? No, I'm not. Because I know it's all going to look fine in the end. Um, and sometimes you'll feel that you've um, over-egged a print or done it too much. And sometimes you may indeed have done that. I probably quite often do. But I just keep going because more often than, than not, I get really nice results. I'm very exciting layered cloth. Um, so I'll turn that around so I can see what I'm doing. You can see I'm getting a bit of a line coming through there um, where my paisleys, where my lines of paisley are. Um, and I don't particularly want that, so we're gonna deal with that in a minute. I haven't quite worked out yet how yet, but we will. So we'll the reason, of course, I'll have a bit of a line is because I'm working in a bit of a line. So, let's get that one off to the edge. And then, I think I've covered up all of those. So we've now got a double, a double pattern. So, I think I'm going to take one of the smaller, um, one of these ones, which is a patterned leaf. And I'm going to change my colour a bit by adding white. Still going on the same palette here. Um, I might change my roller because that roller is very full of paint now um, and it's going to struggle 
to get a lighter colour with that and I would like some lightness on this now. Am I going to change my block? No, do you know I'm not. I'm just going to stay with the same old jobby. So we'll just print off any excess paint on here, of which there is <laughs> one, two, three, four prints at least off and it'll still be there. So this will take a while to get lighter and that's because the block's dirty because I'm too lazy to go and just sort it out. And I could either um, go down, no, let's go, let's go across in the other direction, see what we get. Oh, nice. I like that. Rather a lot, actually. So let's fill that gap nicely as well. That's worked very well. How extremely gratifying of it when I'm filming a video to work nicely for me. And I'm going to over down these um when i've finished now this is where i find it hard because i can't actually see very well now what's going on but i'm going to try and do the same line let's put a bit more white in because this is getting dark quite quickly there we go you can see how i end up with long sessions because there's all this paint i just have to use up being a good yorkshire girl now then what did i do there i'm going this way aren't i so i've got one going that way so i must need one going that way i think next do I? Oh, who knows? I've lost track now. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter at all. All that matters is that we get some pattern on here. So for a piece of material, because this could easily be fabric, I'm using fabric paints. Um, the all I'm, This piece of material, all I'm looking for is pattern. Not really bothered about anything being a particular feature on here. I've still missed that gap, so I'm just going to go back in. I'm going to just put a bit of paint on one side and just get it walloped in there. You can do things much more carefully than this if you want to. You don't have to be as scratchy as I am about things. Scratchy? Do I mean scratchy? Do I mean scatty? Possibly a bit of both. Scratchy and scatty. Now I completely can't see it now, so we'll just we'll just head over here. I know I'm going in this direction. So this piece is going to be over dyed when I've done it to add even more colouring but I could leave it with a white background I, I rarely do because I I um, absolutely love the dyeing process um, and if this was on fabric it could be over dyed um, and the, the dye because these are fabric paints I could heat fix these um, and the dye um, my fabric's got pro oh come on Harry look I'm gibbering now I'm gibbering like an idiot the fabric has soda ash in it so if, it, if I want the Procyon dye to be washable, it can be. I'll explain that when we do some fabric. So I've now got three layers. Oops, and a nice under one. I've got three layers there of print now. So I'm going to stop that one there. And let's try. We'll keep, we'll keep this as a bit. Oh, look. I've managed to print about four of them. Right. So let's change to and do a more random pattern and let's do it we'll still use a kind of curling leaf but we'll use the double one so let's see and we'll go the colors the other way if i can so we'll start with the light color and this time instead of going in lines i'm just going to put this down very randomly and overlapping so all i'm looking to do is just fill the space 18 minutes not bad not bad i'm doing demos at um festival of quilts and I think I've got half an hour and I could do with having my camera filming so I can keep looking up and thinking all oh, right okay how long have I got left because as we all know I do like to overrun a bit and it's going to be a bit odd in festival of quilts lecture theatre if suddenly I just have to stop because um, I've run out of time and the next person comes in so I'm going to have to um consider I may get a stooge in the audience it may be Mr Overdyer Slope um who informs me when my time and where, where my time is like this, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, that sort of thing. Um, so that I'm a bit organised. So I hope lots of you will come and watch that as well, because I don't want to demonstrate to an empty lecture theatre. Um, it'd be nice, it would be nice to have some people there. My demos, well, I think my demos are fun. I'm going to be doing some um, random collaging with fabric, so a bit like the piece I've just shown you. Um, only it won't be that one. I'm going to do one from one of my sketchbooks, which I'll show you another time. And I'm also going to be doing then colouring in on top of such a collage to add detail. So here, don't no, don't don't think about sticking together. Just because I've put it on a sticky piece, let's turn those over. Um, 
We've now got again one layer of pattern and again I could leave it at that and that would look very pretty but we already know I'm not going to. So this time I'm going to go with the sort of turquoisey, turquoisey teal next. Get a bit more of that grey in so we'll, yeah we'll go in with that next. And head for the gaps. Beautiful colour that. Really pleased with that mix. Once time I've had a set of colour and I must never have mixed those particular ones together. Grey, taupe, white, black. They're really useful colours for mixing into the others just to knock them back a bit and give them a little bit more subtlety. On their own, the colours are very bright and clear. And by the end of a session of painting, they won't be bright and clear because you'll have mudded it all up on your palette. But another way of doing that, and if you happen to be a clean worker who uses a new palette and roller for every colour, you can do it by just adding any of those neutrals into your colour and you will just take it back. Grey will, will just slightly subdue it, white will obviously lighten it and black, go on, you know it don't you, black will darken it and a combination of black and white will have much the same effect as grey. Not surprisingly. Okay, so we've got two colours on there now. So I'm going to take off some of the excess and I'm going to put out the dark blue again. I'm going to have to go for quite a long time here on this blue gig because I've got a very blue palette now. So there goes dark blue, same block, and we'll head for the gaps game and see what we get. So this one taken the colours the opposite way around. So I've gone from light underneath to dark on top. And we'll see how different those are when we over dye them. I think over dyeing might be in the next video. I think we'll probably just get this one done in here. And then I'll click it off and I'll record another one using some of the more blocky blocks. <laughs> yeah, the blocky blocks. It's a good phrase, isn't it? What I mean by that is I mean the blocks that are in blocks. I.e., I'll just give up. I'll show them to you in the next video. I know what I mean. You'll know what I mean when I show you them. It's really obvious. To those husbands who make rude comments about their wives watching me and say I'm mad, I'd like you to know that I take that actually as quite a compliment. Um, I consider myself to be, indeed, certainly eccentric. At the very least eccentric. I would be insulted to be called normal. Right, in there, you can see this is a fairly random sort of a process going on here. There's just getting stuck in and I really fancy in the three minutes I've got left putting some light back over the top of that. Now those stumps are quite dark so I'm going to pick up um, this little weedy one. It's got a little <laughs> little weed. I'm going to put some little weed. You see that one? Um, it's a nice little stamp. This over the top to lighten this back up again. And let's see what that does when we print it all off. And when we overdye it, now at the moment, I know you can't see this, but you wait and see, when we overdye this, what will happen? It will be amazing. You will be stunned, prepare to be stunned, because you will be, because it's really, it's just gorgeous. Overdying is so exciting. Once you've done it, whenever students come, they don't want to overdye to begin with, because they've made these beautiful um, fabrics and materials and papers, and they don't want to risk them with the overdye. But... The overdye is so effective, um, once they've done it, they're as addicted as I am. So I've got two papers there, done with the same colours really, just in reverse orders. A couple of curling leaves and the weed. I'm going to turn off there, I'm on nearly 24 minutes. I'm going to do a piece of fabric just the same way so that I can then show you overdyeing them. So I'll sign off for a minute, do some fabric and I'll be back in a second. Bye now.